So today we'll be doing a very important topic, which is a pencil guard. So like we all know, first of all, you take your measurements. So by me looking at these are measurements, the shoulder is 14, the bust length is 9 inches, the round bust is 34 inches, the under bust length is 12 inches, the round under bust is 30 inches, the waist length is 15 inches, and the round waist is 29 inches, the hip length is 23, round hip 38, and gown length is 26 inches. So with this measurement, we are going to use it to construct a pencil gown. So like you we all know, the first thing to do whenever you want to cut anything is to do what? Fold. Okay. So since the first thing to do is to fold, so next thing we do, we are going to fold. But for the sake of this particular story, we are going to be folding with the highest circumference. So in this case, the highest circumference is the round hip, as you can see. Now, in order to fold, you divide your round hip by 4. So whatever you get, add 5 inches to it. These 5 inches constitute the body allowance. Do you understand? To consult everything about the allowance. Okay. Like we say, 38 divided by 4 is going to be giving us 9.5. So this 9.5 plus 5. Remember what I said, this 5 inches is for the allowance. 9.5 plus 5 is going to be giving us 14.5. Do you understand? So, first thing you do, in order for you to fold, since you've gotten the highest compress plus 5, that is what we use in folding, measure out 14.5. Do you understand? When you measure it out, Make sure you mark it out. Do you understand? Make sure you mark it out. As you can see, this is our pattern paper. If you make use of material, it's the same thing. So after you're finished marking it out, next thing you need to do is to use your rule and connect. Do you understand? So after you are done connecting, next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be folding. Do you understand? Fold it out. Okay. Remember, we are just cutting, we are going to be cutting only the front, which after we finish cutting the front, we use it and cut the back. As you can see, we are done now. We folded it. So at the end of the day, you are going to be getting 14.5 after the folding or true. We'll be getting 14.5. Okay. Now, after the fold, the next thing we are going to be doing, which is very important, is to mark out the measurement points. Do you understand? So the measurement points in this case are the bust length. The under bust length, the waist length, and the gown length. No, the hip length and the gown length. Do you understand? Okay, so these are also called the vertical measurements. Do you understand? These measurement points are called the vertical measurements because all of them they are going towards this way. So let's mark out the vertical measurement starting from the bust line. So in this case, the bust line is 9 inches. First of all, before you start marking out your uh, 9 inches, first of all, mark out your half inch. Mark out your half inch okay mark out half inch mark it out from here are you seeing it make sure you mark it out so what is this half inch serving for it's serving for the shoulder seam allowance do you understand like on the shoulder you must actually sew it do you understand after you finish cutting so this half inch is for sewing out the shoulder so after you are done take your rule and day connect Okay, so now when you are done connecting, if you notice now, if I measure out my uh, bust line, now I will not be measuring it out from here again, rather I'll be measuring it out from here. Do you understand? If I measure it out, you see that it has gone down with more half inch. Are you seeing it? Okay, so that is how it's supposed to be. So I advise us to use this method. So we start from here, start measuring from here, 9 inches. Are you seeing it? Okay, so now, as you can see, I marked it into two places. This is to enable me to get a straight line whenever I want to connect. So after that, next thing we are going to be doing, let's mark out the underbust length. That is from shoulder to the underbust, which is actually 12 inches. Are you seeing it? So also make sure you mark it out into two. Do the same thing to the waist line or waist length. Now the waist length is 15 inches. As you can see, also make, up, make sure you mark it out into two in order to get a straight line, please. After that, next we are going to be marking out is the hip line. Remember I said the hip line or the hip length is 23 inches, as you can see. So make sure you mark it out into two in order to get a straight line. Then the final thing is the, or second to the final stuff is the gown length. So the gown length in this case is 26 inches, as you can see. Then also make sure you mark out, as immediately you mark your six inches, make sure you mark out your hemming allowance or folding allowance, which is extra two inches allowance, that is 38. Please also make sure you mark it out into two. 
that is 36 plus 2, which is 38 inches. Okay, so now when we are, now we are done, next thing you need to do is to take your ruler and connect in order to form a horizontal line. Okay, now we are done with the horizontal. As you can see, this one is the shoulder. Are you seeing it? This one is the bust length. This one is the under bust length. This is the waist length. This is the hip length. And this is the gown length. Why this one is the allowance? Do you understand? Okay, so now we are done. Next thing we are going to be doing now is to we are going to, we are going to be constructing the um, armhole. Do you understand? We are going to be constructing the armhole. So, like I said, we are going to be constructing the armhole. But before we do that, first of all, we need to be working with the shoulder. Now, the shoulder is 14 inches. As we all know, the shoulder is divided by 2. 14 divided by 2, which is going to be giving us 7 inches. Are you seeing it? Okay. Now, 7 inches. Please make sure you add extra half inch to it, which is the shoulder seam allowance also. I mean, for the sleeve side. The armhole seam allowance. Okay. Please also make sure you do this into 2. Two places now for those that want to ask me where exactly are you placing this one please no place exactly do you understand like i'm just trying to get a straight line here so even if you place it down here it's still okay so for us when you connect the two points you get a straight line okay so seven inches and a half so at the end of the day you see i'm going to be getting a straight line this straight line is going to be used in forming the angle itself. Okay, remember I said before we form the angle, we need to get what we call the shoulder slope. The shoulder slope is, as you can see, your shoulder is slanted, it's not straight. You understand? So nobody's shoulder is straight. So in other words, we need to make this one slanted also, so that when you wear it, it's going to be well fitted. So in order to get the shoulder slope, first of all, the standard neck width. When I mean the standard neck width, that is an average neck width. The width of the neck is six inches. Now, since it is 6 inches, the standard neck width, which is what? 6 inches. Now, since it's 6 inches and we are folding our fabric into 2, that means 6 divided by 2 is going to be giving us 3 inches. So, now, mark from here to here, 3 inches. Are you seeing it? So, now, when you get 3 inches, on this armhole line, make sure you go down with 1 inch. Especially for female, use what? 1 inch. Now, as you can see, we have this standard neck width that we have here. So, next thing we are going to be doing is... We are going to be connecting both of the points in order to form the shoulder slope. Okay, so now we are done. As you can see, we've actually formed the shoulder slope. Next, we are going to be doing, we are going to be constructing the armhole itself. So in order to construct the armhole, we also need what we call the armhole length. Do you understand? The armhole length, that is from this part of the shoulder to the armpit. So in order to get it, we have different methods. As you know, I don't know if you know this particular method of um, your round bust divided by 6 plus 1.5 is also going to give you the ample length. Do you understand? But you know the kind of the particular method that I use here, which is very simple and um, nice, which is whatever you get here, that is whatever that is your shoulder divided by 2. That is what we have here is what? We have 7. And we also have extra half inch to add it to it. Are you seeing it? That making it 7 and a half. So take exactly the same thing here seven and a half are you seeing it okay so when you take it here please make sure you rule horizontally in order to get the armhole length now look at it the from here to here is called the armhole length do you understand okay so the next thing we are going to be doing still on the construction of the armhole is to get the armhole curve do you understand there is usually a curve like this uh -huh. so in order to get it we have this way of getting it look at it Whatever that is your armhole length divided by 2. As you can see, the armhole length here is 7.5 divided by 2, which we are going to get 3 3 quarter. Are you seeing it? Yes. So now you've gotten 3 3 quarter. Next thing you are going to be doing is place your tape like this. Look at it. Place your tape like this. Um, okay. So after you finish uh, marking out this point, next thing you are going to be doing, look at it. From here, as you can see, this line connecting, I mean, the vertical and the horizontal line, wherever they meet, which is forming angle 98, from here, place your tape, they're going down there. You seeing it? Look at it. They're going down there. Mark out to one inch. As you can see, from here to here is one inch. Now we've gotten from here and here. Next thing we need to do is to connect it. If you can connect using your free hand or your um, um, cuff set, or you can even use a broomstick to do that. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be making use of my free hand. 
So you can see from here to this particular point is the ambo. I've actually constructed the ambo. Are you seeing it? But there's something I need to introduce you to. I call it the ambo effect. You already know the ambo effect. Okay, now this ambo effect, the reason why we apply ambo effect is because you notice sometimes when you wear a dress, you notice that the armhole part, the armhole region is so folded and rumpled, you squeezed. So in order to avoid all this excess folding, squeezing and rumpled, we need to apply this armhole effect. So in order to work on this armhole effect, it's more like a darting, this shape to the armhole region. So in order to apply it, as you can see, the center part of the uh, this armhole is from here, make sure you step back with half inch or three quarter. It depends on your body shape. Do you understand? But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be making use of three quarter. So look at it from here to here. Are you seeing it? Okay. So next thing you are going to be doing, since you have this point, this point, this point, this point, are you seeing it? So next thing you are going to be doing, you are going to be connecting. Are you seeing it that I've connected? Okay. Now there's something very important I need to let you know. This armhole effect is only applied in front of the dress, not at the back. Because if you notice, it is the front part of the dress that usually floats when you wear a dress. So that is why we apply it only. So what am I trying to say? Look at it. When you are when when you will be cutting this particular dress now, hmm? when we are cutting the back, we first of all we are going to cut with the original one. Are you seeing it? Which after we finish cutting everything, we now get the front separate and now cut with this particular one. Are you seeing? So that is how we we'll be doing it. Okay. Now as you can see, we are done with the ample. 100%. So next thing we are going to be doing, we are going to be imputing the horizontal measurement. That will be putting the part, um, the body measurement there. Do you understand? So by me looking at it, we have the round box. The round box which is 34 inches. So the round box which is 34 inches divided by 4, which is going to be giving us um, 8.5. Hope that's it. 8.5. 34 divided by 4 is 8.5. So take your tape, place it on the bust line, mark out 8.5. Are you seeing it? Okay. Now when you mark out 8.5, since we are working with a pattern draft, I can choose not to add any extra allowance so that when I take this paper now and place on my fabric, I can now add the allowance. Do you understand? But I really want to do this class in a way that whatever you see here is exactly what you will do on your material. So in that case, I'm going to be adding the body allowance, which is extra two inches. Is if you are adding that to this dress, eh, you can make sure you add extra 2.5 to 3 inches. Do you understand? But if you are not adding a that to it, you can add at least 2 inches to it. Do you understand? Okay, so you do the same thing at the underboss. The underboss which is 30 inches. Round underboss. So 30 inches divided by 4 is going to be giving us 7.5 inches. So 7.5 inches, mark it out. Then also make sure you add extra two inches allowance to it. That is the body allowance. Are you seeing it? Okay, so we have the waist, waistline. Okay, the round waist, which is 29 inches, divided by four is going to be giving us seven one quarter. So that seven one quarter, mark it out. Seven one quarter, are you seeing it? Then also make sure you add your two inches allowance. As you can see, this two inches allowance is so fixed. We use it all through. Okay, so, there is this situation whereby the body allowance is not fixed, but for the sake of this tutorial, I take it that the body allowance is fixed. Do you understand? So let's work on the hip. So the round hip, which is 38 inches, which is 38 divided by 4, is going to be giving us 9.5. Okay? Then 9.5, mark it, make sure you mark it up. Then you add your 2 inches allowance. Are you seeing it? Okay. Now there's something I need to really need to teach you here about your pencil. Uh, Gun. Remember, it's pencil that we're actually working on. That means it's going to be when we shape it, it's going to be coming into this place. If it is a straight gun, it's going to be straight from the hip downwards straight. If it is an acorn, that means from the hip, it's going to be flaying out. These are the three differences. Do you understand? Okay, since we are working on pencil, that is from here to be ending. Now, there's something I want to show you the simplest way of getting this down part of a pencil gun. Okay, the simplest way is to, as you can see, whatever you have at the hip, are you seeing it? Whatever you have at the hip, now we have 9.5 plus 2 inches, giving us what? 11.5. Okay, take down that 11.5 to this side. Look at it. Take it down. That is, you have exactly, are you seeing it? So from here, you can step back with 
one inch, 1.5 to two inches. Did I say what? You can step back with from one inch to two inches, depending on how fitted you want here to be. Do you understand? So, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be stepping in with 1.5 inches. That is one and a half. Okay, from here, stepping with one and a half. So, please make sure you also do the same thing at the allowance. Are you seeing? So, we have all these points. I mean, looking at it, we have all this. So, next thing we're going to be doing, we're going to be connecting all the points in order to form the shape of the gown. So, we've actually gotten the shape of the gown. It's very nice. You can see down. Okay. So, now we've gotten the shape of the gown. The next thing remaining for us to, at least, let's say we've actually finished this front part of the um, pencil gown is the neck. So, you can see. so now, depending on the type of neck you want to put on your dress. So now let's say which type of neck you want us to use. A V neck. Okay, a V neck. So in order for us to work on a V neck, first of all, you choose the neck width. You understand? Choose the neck width. Okay. Choose the neck width. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, the neck width we are going to be using is four inches width. Remember, the neck width is your choice. Okay. So now the neck depth we are going to be using now is seven inches. Are you seeing it? So look at seven inches. Okay. So we have here and we have here. Are you saying all we need to do is to connect? If you want to get a sharp V neck, you need to use your ruler and connect it. Do you understand? From here down to here gives you a sharp V neck. Then if you want to get a kind of curved V neck, let me show you. From here, are you seeing it? Connect like this. You've gotten a curved V neck. So whichever one you want to get. So let's say in a situation. It's not just this v-neck that we want to we need a round neck and this round neck let's say we still want to choose four as our width the neck depth now let's say since we are making it a round neck let's say it's five inches are you saying it? so that means we'll do the horizontal line like this then get this one here are you saying it? so if you're making a round neck since you've formed the neck block now let's see you need to do at this same point see the same thing we did here at this same point where the two lines are joining you also mark out one inch. Now, when you mark out one inch, you can use your free hand or your half set or even your half rules and the or your free hand or even a broomstick and connect it like this. Are you seeing it? Now, as you can see, this is a round neck. So there are many kinds of neck for us to use. We also have a canoe neck. Do you understand? For the sake of this tutorial, I think we have to stop here. So, when we're looking at it, we are almost done with the front. Are you seeing it? So, but there's something else we need to do, which is the that whenever you're making a fitted dress you actually need a that for you need to come out very well do you understand well fitted so in order for us to put a that on this dress normally we have this chart which you already know do you understand so we have what you call the nipple to nipple the bust apart we also call it the bust pan so in this chart we have list of like different measurements and the bust pan for it do you understand so by men looking at this one this one is bust of 34 the bust pan is how many do you know the bust pan? You know what I mean when I say bust pan. Bust pan is from this nipple, the distance from this nipple to this nipple. Do you understand what I mean? The distance from the left nipple to the right nipple, or from the right to the left, right versa. Okay. So we have in a chart already. Let's say bust of thirty four is this, bust of thirty six is this. Do you understand? Okay. So I also like to maybe I will try also post it, uh, put it in the description link. So now look at it for this. Um, bust of 34 the nipple to nipple is seven inches shape seven inches so now see, let's say it's seven inches now yes since it's seven inches it means since we are folding this fabric into two seven divided by two is what 3.5 so thereby you from here you mark out 3.5 on the bust line here you mark out 3.5 are you seeing it okay so mark out 3.5 then mark out 3.5 then mark out 3.5 okay so after you are done marking out this 3.5 take your rule and then connect so you can see i've connected are you seeing it now so now you've connected hmm? we are not going to affect the dart directly so now there are different ways people can affect that people can affect that via the underboss some persons can affect the at the waist this is 
any part of your body that is the tiniest that's where you really affect the blood now let's use the waist for the sake of this tutorial since it is the tiniest are you seeing it the waist is 29 why the underboss is 30 okay so now from here look at it from this part of the line mark out half inch towards this side are you seeing it then from this part also mark out what half inch towards this side okay so we've gotten this side and this side then another thing i still need to let you know is that the dart usually starts from one inch below the bust line are you seeing it so this is the bust line and this is from here this is one inch are you seeing it okay so we now have where the um, that started and we now have the dart itself then we are still going to get where the dart is going to stop so automatically where do that stop that usually stop at two inches above the hip line do you understand okay what do i mean look at it two inches above the hip line from here you step up by two inches are you saying so now we now have all these points we now have these four points from here 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 and there, here so next thing we are going to be doing we are going to be connecting in order to form the that okay guys so as you can see next thing we are going to do now is that we're going to cut out this particular one then after we are done cutting it out then we use it and they trace for the back okay so let's cut it out So as you can see, see what I was saying, as you are cutting it out, you need to cut out this one first. Are you saying it? So that after you have finished tracing the back, then next thing you do is you cut out this particular one. Please, there's something very important I want to show you. Now look at this side. Remember we left half inch? Please make sure you put back that half inch in a slanted form. You understand? Look at it. That half inch. Are you seeing it? Thank you. Thank you. Look at it here. Okay, this is very important so that I thank God for the fact that I did not skip it. Are you seeing it? Okay, so now let's cut out. So, as you can see, we are done cutting it. Out. So, we are going to be using it to cut the back part. So, for us to cut the back part, next thing we need to do is to Okay, as you can see now, make sure you fold to the back just the same way you folded for the front. Remember, we folded with the higher circumference, we added extra five. Is I would I would like to let you know that that five is for both the body allowance, do you understand, and for the zipper allowance. Okay, now look by me looking at it, you can see I folded it, I've marked out my two inches for the zipper allowance. So, next thing I need to do is to take the material, the one I've already cut, and you can see, take it and place, place it like this. Look at it, place it like this, making sure that you place it before the 2 inches allowance. Okay, now make sure you drop in and hold it way. Make sure you hold it way so that it will not shift. Make sure you pin it very, very well. So after you are done pinning, next thing you need to do is to take your scissors. It's very, very important. Take your scissors and then shape it out, starting from here. Okay, so as you can see, after we are done, we are done shaping it out. Next thing we need to do is to we get the back neck. So by me looking at it, back neck is still your choice. But whenever you are making a V neck in front, please, it's advisable to make sure that your back neck is a high neck. You understand what I mean? What I mean by high neck, look at the front one. The front one is a very low neck that is up to seven inches. Make sure that the back one is very, very high. Like example, you can use maximum of two inches and minimum of one inch do you understand so that means i can still choose to use 1.5 inches are you seeing it so from this 1.5 next thing i'll do look at it from here i will now have to connect like this are you seeing it okay so after that i now have to use my scissors and then cut it off okay make sure you finish up this particular part okay so remember what I just told you guys here. After you are done tracing out here, you go. Now take your scissors. Please remember what I said. The armhole effect is only applied in front of any dress. So take your scissors and trim out this particular one. This armhole effect you are seeing here. Okay. So you can see only the front. The armhole effect is applied here. So after you are done doing that, next we are going to be doing. Make sure you open this your zipper allowance. Make sure you open it up. After you are done opening it up, the last thing for you to do is to trace this dart 
so that it will appear at the back. Do you understand? So all you need to do in order for you to trace it is very, very simple. Look at it. First of all, remove the pins you are seeing here so that it can enable you lift. Are you seeing it? So first of all, let's straight tape that. So as you can see, if I open it up like this, look at it. I can see where the, the pin is passing through. Are you seeing it? So I'm actually, I'm actually pressing it down. Look at it. Okay. So you do this same thing on all the points. Okay, look at it. You do the same thing here. Please, you can actually still make use of this method on your fabric. You understand? You can still make use of this method. It is a very simple method. Then finally, is for the upper part. Is there something I want to tell you? Where the dart starts is not the same thing as where the dart will start at the back. You understand? So depending on the person's body measurement, for the sake of this particular tutorial, it is going to be starting exactly. Look at it. Look at it. This is the armhole length. Are you seeing it? That is the chest line. Look at it. So the for the sake of this particular tutorial, for the measurement we are using. Especially this measurement of um, under bust length of 12 inches, 13 inches. Do you understand? So it is going to be starting from this um, armhole length line. Are you seeing it? Armhole line. Are you seeing it? Now, generally, I would like to say that it starts from this armhole line or half inch to one inch below the armhole length. Do you understand? But for the sake of this tutorial, looking at where everything is stopping the armhole length, we need to do what? The that need to start exactly from this armhole length. Okay. But for those that have like under bust length of 14, 15, do you understand, 16, you need to start from one inch below the armhole line. Do you understand? Okay, so let's mark it out here. Okay. Okay. So after you are done, it's very simple. Next thing you need to do is to release this one. Okay. After you are done releasing this one, then use your ruler and they connect your that at the back. So that is it, guys. You can see, look at it now. Also, make sure you do the same thing here, just everywhere. Okay. And uh, this is one last thing I need to talk about. This is not, um, it's dependent on the person's shape. You understand? Me, I call it the zipper effect or the back effect. Such is it works in this way when you wear a clothes, sometimes you notice um, the excess allowance at the back, excess puffing. So, when you notice that, in order for you to reduce it, you need to apply this back or zip effect. So, in order to do it, look at it. This is more like giving also giving a dart at the back, at the back center. Are you seeing it? the same that you gave here? The same that you're going to give here. Look at it here. Look at it. Are you seeing it now? Look at it from here. The same, see, look at where the back dart is stopping. Are you seeing it? Okay. Now, see the waistline where the dart started. Okay. So, next thing you're going to do is look at it. The same thing you did here, that is half inch. Are you seeing it? This one, you can also increase this to three quarter, depending on the person's back, shape of the back. You understand? If the back is entering inside too much, at least you can still try to use three quarter. If it is average, you can use what? Half inch. Look at it. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll be using half inch. Okay. So, now look at what I'll be doing now. From here, connect down to here. Are you seeing it? I've connected. So let's say the person's slit, you know, this thing is going to have slit while you're sewing it. Let's say the person's slit is going to be stopping from, okay, this is the real length, and the person's slit is going to be stopping at uh, 8 inches. Are you seeing it from here? 8 inches from here. So the same thing you marked here, make sure you mark it here. Are you seeing it? Okay. Now make sure you take this one down exactly. Take it down. Okay. Now when you take it down, rule we'll out this one like this. Okay, so at the end of the day, we have this shape. Are you seeing it? So now, uh, next thing you need to do is you take your scissors and then cut it off. This also, I want you to know there are other ways of applying this effect. So if you want to know more, make sure you ask in the comment section. So that is it. So when we'll be sewing this stuff now, there's how this thing works. At the end of the day, it will just... Look at it. This that you see that is applied here. When we are sewing it, it's more like going to be appearing in this way. Like, look at it. Entering inside like this. Are you seeing it? Something like that. So that's how it's going to be. So that is it. 
So guys, in order for you to, after you are done cutting it, in order for you to make this dress, first of all, all you need to do is to, if you are actually working with a lining, all you need to do is take this fabric as you're seeing here, take this one you've actually cut, take it and place on the lining and cut exactly what you have here. Do you understand? So after you finish cutting it exactly what you have here, next thing you are going to be doing, please make sure you effect all this that put on the original material and on the line. So after you are done, next thing you are going to do is what? You are going to be sewing out your dart. Do you understand? So after you are done sewing, you are going to be sewing out the whole dart. So look at it. Next thing you need to like, you need to sew out this dart. So for you to sew out this dart, you can see this thread line. Make sure you pull it out straight like this. Are you saying it? So that whatever that is showing here is something that is showing for this platform. So now, just make sure that since you'll be working on your own on material, as you can see, this is a pepper right here. So make sure you actually sew this way. Start from here, make sure you back stitch. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that this is actually a pepper. Make sure you back stitch. Then sew this way. As you can see, after you are done stitching it, are you saying it? Open it up. Now look at it. Now remember, this is a paper. If the material is going to relax more, doesn't mean that it will like relax 100%. Except until when you use your iron to iron it out. Do you understand? Okay. Now as you can see, this place puffing out is really the major reason why we are doing this. That. Do you understand? Now as you can see here, going in just to maintain the size. And as you can see here, becoming wider. Yes, just to give the perfect shape to the hip side. Are you saying it? So this is the same thing you are still going to do at the back. Do it at on your lining also. Do you understand? Then I will now show us how to turn your lining. Or that's if you are not using a lining, how to turn the facing. Do you understand? So I will also do that. Okay, guys. After you are done um, dating it out. Now remember what I said. If you're using a lining, you have to use your lining after that and everything. Use your lining and turn the neck, turn the side and the that part now but if you're not using a line i'm still going to teach you how to use a facing to turn this because in most cases even if you use a bias to turn this it's not going to be needed especially when you have a big neck so how do you do it just make sure you fold your fabric just the same way like when you were drafting it so you can see fold it okay then also make sure you fold another fabric are you seeing it and that fabric that you are sure that will be at least above this space you're seeing here above the shoulder Okay, now after you are done, take it and place like this. Are you saying it? Place it like this as, as if you want to trace this particular stuff. So, next thing you need to do is to take your pin and pin it down. Look at it. Take your pin and then pin it down. Okay, after you are done pinning it down, take your chalk and retrace. So you can see, take your chalk and then retrace like this. Are you seeing it? Okay, after you are done doing that, next thing you are going to do is to cut it out. When you cut it out, you can then can now the, um, remove this pin. Are you seeing it? Okay, so when you remove this pin, the next thing you are going to do, depending on the thickness you want your facing to be, Let's say I want my facing to be 3-3 three, three inch. Are you seeing it? So start marking 3-3 three, three inches here. Start marking 3-3 three, three inches here. Start marking 3-3 three, three inches here. Okay, are you seeing it? Mark 3 inches like this. So next thing you are going to be doing is connect. Look at it. Connect it. You can either connect it in a vertical way or you can either connect it in a very sharp way or in a curved way like this. So either way you want to do it. Okay. As you can see, I've actually formed the facing for the front. Look at it. Are you seeing it? Okay. So see what this thing means. See what we mean by here. Then let's say, look at it. We are going to be using this one to turn the way. Are you seeing it? Okay. For you to use it and turn the way. Most cases, people usually want to turn so that it will be going towards the back part. Do you understand? But if you still want it to go to the front part, it's still okay. So if you want it to go to the back part, make sure you place this in front. You understand what I mean? What I mean is, 
right side facing the right side. Are you saying it? Okay. Now, for us, for you to go to the back, all we need to do is to place it like this. Take your pin and then hold it. Okay. Take your pin and then hold it. After you are done doing that, next thing you need to do is to go and sew from here to here. You can sew using quarter inch to half inch. Do you understand? So as you can see, after you are done sewing it out, next thing, look at it, you just done sewing it out. Next thing you are going to do, since this is a very sharp v there is this mistake people normally do. Next thing you need to do is to take your scissors and give a sharp cut here. Are you seeing it? Like this. Make sure it doesn't touch the um, thread. Do you understand? Yes. Like this. This enables it when you turn it, it will actually give you a perfect V neck. Okay, so after you're done, next thing you need to do is to see, see, another important thing is either you weave here out, are you seeing it? Yeah. In order to give it a neat finish, is either you overlock it? Okay. Or you fold it out. You can either fold it out. Look at it, are you seeing it? Yeah. Turn it. It's mind you, this way is going to be easier on my fabric, you understand, than on the paper. Okay, very nice and very sharp. So as you can see, if I'm looking at this, you see how beautiful it is. I've actually turned now, see here is giving me a very sharp V neck. That is because I notched it do you understand okay so that is it so you can uh, next thing you have to do you can either tack here or you hem it with a hemming gum or any other stuff you understand or you can out actually also leave it this way yes because there's no way it's going to come out do you understand so either way you need to finish it okay so the man looking at the front part look at the front part well finished are you seeing it very neat okay so this is the same thing you are still going to do at the back so you can see look at it are you seeing it this is the same thing you are going to go back. Take your fabric, fold it. After you are done folding it, use this one to place on top of it. This is what we are folding so that we get two. That is the two um, back. Okay. After you are done, just the same thing we did. Trace with your chalk, your marker, anything. So as you can see, when we're looking at it, we are done with the facing. So look at it here. This is the front part. Use it and then look at it. Are you seeing it? So make sure you hem this down part, then use it and turn. You understand the same thing we did at the front. This same, this same one also goes to the other side. Okay. So now the next thing we are going to be doing, we are going to be imputing our measurement on our dress after we are done preparing and doing all this uh, facing. Do you understand? We are going to do fitting the measurement. See, we want to put a like impute the measurement such that we will now do what join the both sides. Do you understand? So, the first step of the stuff is first of all, fold your fabric like this, then fold your fabric like this. Make sure you impute the post measurement, which in this case is still what 8.5. Are you seeing it? That is 34 divided by so it's marked already. Okay, then the under bust now look at it. Which is um, 37 point five. As you can see, it's no longer seven point five because of the dart. So the dart actually affected it. So mark, remark your seven point five. Okay. Then the same thing goes to the on um, uh, waist. Waist. The waist is um, twenty nine. That is seven point two five. Okay. Make sure you mark it again. The man looking at it, you can see that it's no longer as it's supposed to be. Okay. Look at it. Seven point two five. Are you seeing it? Okay. So the same thing to believe the hip is where it's supposed to be because the dart did not really affect it. Okay, so it only changed on the places where the dart affected. So look at it now. So you can see the shape is changing. So make sure you connect. Make sure you connect. Okay. Are you seeing it? Now if you notice, you see that this shape is no longer that too curved because of the dart. So that is the work of the dart. The dart helps to shape in a dress so that it will not be very difficult for you to sew. So after you are done doing this, next thing you need to do, the simplest way of me 
um, giving out the measurement on the other side is by using your pin. So place it equally like this, as you can see, are you seeing it? Use your pin and pin towards the line. So after you're done pinning it towards the line, look at it, pin it towards the line. So guys, as you can see, after you are done pinning all three, so turn the back, as you can see, this thing actually gave us the same um, sh um, shape. Are you seeing it? So now, use your chalk eh, and trace back this thing in order to get the shape like this. So after you are done doing that, remove all the pin. So by me looking at this thing, you see that I've removed the pin. So by me looking at it, you notice that you have the, these two shapes here. Are you seeing it? So this will actually help you to sew. So how do you do it? Look at it. Since we are done preparing this one, all you need to do is to face it like this. The front side facing the front side. Are you seeing it? Do the same thing here. Look at it. The front side facing the front side. Are you seeing it? So after, next thing you are going to be doing is place these two together and sew out this side, following this direction. This guy, do the same thing here. Following this guy. Are you seeing it? The center is still open. So that is all we are going to do now. Okay hey guys, as you can see, we are done sewing out the two sides. So by me looking at it, you notice that we have joined the two sides. Are you seeing it? So next thing that is very important, this is my own coupling method, is to do what? Make sure you fold it out in the two. Are you seeing it? Make sure it's not remaining the back part and the shoulder for us to couple. Are you seeing it? Make sure you fold it out into two. It's very, very important. Okay, when you fold that into two, as you can see, this is the front part, this is the back part. So next thing we are going to be doing is we are going to be imputing the measurement back again. Now, but in th this time, we are not going to be dividing by four. As you can see, it's no longer four like it's now two, one, two. Are you seeing it? It's now two, one, two. So now the boss now we are going to be dividing by two. The boss is 34 divided by two is 17 inches. Okay. So from here, measure out your 17 inches. Are you seeing it? Measure out your 17 inches and mark it out. Are you seeing it? Okay. So the under bust, which is um 30, that is 15 inches. Are you seeing it? Measure out your 15 inches. Are you saying it? Then the width, which is 14.5, then measure it out 14.5. The hip, which is, is make sure you place it very, very well. The hip, which is, the hip is what? 19. The hip is 19. That is that 8 divided by 2 is 19. So make sure you mark out your 19 inches. Are you saying it? So next thing you're going to do is to make sure you connect. Now, as you can see this, you notice that even the back center, we have a specific shape on it. Are you saying it? Now, this shape will enable the back not to have that excess puffing on the rest. You can see we have a very nice shape at the back. So at the end of the day, we are going to be sewing this out. Are you seeing it? We are going to be sewing it out. Remember, it is still at this bag that we are going to be putting our zipper. It's still at this bag that we are going to be opening for the slit. Do you understand? But first of all, I advise we sew it out. Now, as we are sewing it, use a loose stitch. Wherever you, we are going to open again, use a loose stitch. When you reach at the point which your, your zip is going to stop, then tighten it up. Use a tight stitch. Then when you reach at the point which your slit is going to start, do you understand? then using it up again. Now, the slits now. Remember, we already have 2 inches allowance. Do you understand? That is our hemming. So, the slit is going to be... Please, I advise you to use from 7 inches. Are you seeing it? From 6 inches to 8 inches as your slit. It is not too much. It's just average. Okay. Then, for the zip. Where is the zip going to stop? The zip is going to stop like exactly on the hip line or 1 inch above the hip line. Do you understand? That is where your zip is going to stop. So, remember what I said, we are going to sew up here. Then after we finish sewing here, I'm going to show us how to sew the shoulder and hem the damp part. Do you understand? Okay. okay. So, as you can see guys, I'm done sewing out to the center back. So, I will still turn it. Um, now, next I need to lock the shoulder. So, to lock, you don't just sew the shoulder anyhow. So, you can see, look at the face. Are you seeing the face? Yes. Look at the face also here. 
Are you saying it? So you love to show that this one to this one and this one to this one. Are you saying it? Okay. So this one to this one, look at it. The material is going to be facing the material. Why the facing is going to be facing the facing. Are you saying it? So we are going to be joining with half inch. Are you saying it? Half inch. See, you can either start from center or start from here, but either way, make sure that both here, the center part, both of them rhymes. Do you understand? Okay. So now look at it. Are you saying it? Make sure that both of them rhymes here. This one working with your material, I think it's going to be easier because this one is actually the pattern paper I'm working with. Okay, when you are done, next thing you need to do is to do it like this. Are you seeing it? So see how beautiful the shoulder is. Are you seeing it? Yes, this is the best way of joining. So the same thing you do on the other side. Exactly the same thing. So guys, the final thing to do here is to fold the base part of the gown. Are you seeing it? Remember, we actually use two inches. So fold it down. After you are done folding, make sure you sew it out like this. Do you understand? So that's what we are going to be doing now. Fold it out and then sew. So guys, as you can see, we are actually done. So the only thing remaining here, I think, is the sleeve. So if you don't know how to make use of this, um, how to put a sleeve on a dress, so I'll make sure I put the link in the description box where you get a video on how to cut and fix a sleeve on a dress. So thank you very much. Please do make sure you subscribe. Love you.